Welcome again to another edition of the 11th OVC. This time what we're going to be talking about is uh, hard tack. Now this is a video that has been done over and over and over again. Uh, if, you go, if you search on YouTube on hard tack, you'll find a hundred different recipes, a hundred different videos. Uh, but what I'm going to focus on uh, is kind of the lessons I've learned, how to make it a little bit more authentic than, uh, than what you've seen in the past, and uh, kind of some tricks of the trade that allowed me to uh, I guess avoid some of the pitfalls and why people like or don't like it uh, and actually how to make it last for uh, multiple years. Uh, ask a few of the reenactor buddies that I have and uh, they'll tell you that uh, my heart attack is definitely hard but it will keep for multiple years at a time. We're still eating some heart attack from uh, about three or four years ago. So uh, anyways that's what we're going to talk about so stay with us and let's uh, cook some heart attack. Now one of the things you'll notice uh, between the, the hard tack that you see nowadays versus the original hard tack uh, is the, the, not the consistency, but how it looks, the, the density of it, and the, uh, I guess the preservation of it. Uh, most of the original photographs that you see and, and most of the rare surviving pieces of hard tack that are out there, uh, they are you know, relatively thick, about a third of an inch thick, uh, relatively dense. I mean, they're not like a, a cracker that uh, if you go to church and then you have the uh, uh, Matzos crackers or anything like that. Now, they're not like that, although the top, if you look at the original photographs, the top seems to have a lot of air bubbles in it. Uh, but as far as the, the cracker as a whole, uh, from what I've seen, I mean, I've never held one in my hand, which obviously that, that would be a lot beneficial. But uh, from, from the pictures I can see of the originals uh, and, and going to the museums, uh, you know that third of an inch. I mean, it's 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 thick, it's dense, it's hard, uh, and and that's what we're looking for in in our uh, re, I guess reproduction hardtack. Uh, so one of the things to to avoid is don't you don't want it paper thin. You don't want it like a cracker. Yes, it makes it easier to eat. Yes, it's a lot uh, better that way. Uh, but you don't get the uh, the density. You don't get the volume uh, of cracker. And honestly, from a transportation standpoint, they don't make it to the battlefield where you want them to make. Or if you have it in your, you have your haversack, uh, it's going to it's going to be crumbs by the time you get there. And so that's why that, that half an inch to a third of an inch thickness, uh, really dense thickness is really what you're looking for. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. That's kind of what we're going to go for. All right, so if you look on, on the recipes and, and uh, all the different uh, ingredients out there, hard tack is pretty easy. It's consisting of flour, salt, and, uh, and a little bit of water, basically. Uh, now, what I've, obviously, this is not a period uh, mixing method. I'm going to mix it uh, using a KitchenAid. Now, I did it using uh, spoons and, and uh, whisks and stuff like that. Uh, but one of the secrets to having really good dense hard tack uh, is making it basically like bread. You want the consistency of a good dough, a good bread. Uh, you don't want it soupy or anything like that. Uh, so the recipe usually looks for, or what you find, is about uh, four cups of flour, uh, a full tablespoon of salt, and about one cup of water. Now what you'll see is I, I tend to change that a little bit based on the consistency. Um, when I, before I well, I guess when I'm mixing it, before I get it out and roll it, uh, I, I'm looking for a very dense, very dry, but very cohesive uh, consistency to the hardtack. Uh, once you have that, then you can get on the table and roll it out. Uh, and I'll show you some tricks on having it not stick to your cutters. So that's what we're going to do. Again, in my video, uh, I want to kind of bring out some tricks of the trade. I mean, you can you can look on a hundred other videos on how to make hard tack. Uh, but what I normally do to keep uh, my bowls and my flour and everything uh, consistent and not sticking all that kind of stuff, I start with adding a little bit of water on the bottom uh, of the uh, of the bowl, and then basically after that, I add the entire bit of flour. Uh, this is four cups of flour. Again, our ratio is four cups of flour, one tablespoon of salt. So that's what we're doing is one tablespoon of salt in there. Um, and then it says one cup of water. But I add the water slowly throughout the entire process. Again, what you're looking for is a very dense, very consistent, but yet very cohesive uh, type of uh, dough. So go ahead and lock that. And uh, again, put it on, uh, on a one for my KitchenAid and just let that uh, spin and very uh, gradually add a little bit of water to get that very uh, dense bit of dough. So now you'll see that uh, we're getting, a, you know, get some moisture in there, add a little bit more water. And again, I just add a little bit at a time 
uh, to make sure that it gets that uh, gets that dough. Uh, now, of course, you'll see. You know, some of you guys may be uh, or probably are better cooks than I am with these kitchen aids, uh, but I usually have to take the spoon off of the uh, off the gear, get a spoon and take it off the sides. And I'll go ahead and do that right now. But you can start seeing that uh, consistency. If you look, it's actually a little bit wet there in the center. So I'll go ahead and scrape scrape the walls off, uh, and then again continue mixing it. All right, so I'll go ahead and stop it, unlock it, take the sides off. There we go. Those of you who cook a lot probably are laughing at me, but uh, there we go. Start with that again. Add a little bit more water. Go ahead and lock it, put it back on one, maybe two. There we go. Once, you, once the water's kind of in there, and it's starting, there we go, starting to mix pretty good. Uh, you'll start to see that dough ball basically end up being one just gigantic ball. Now one thing I've noticed uh, to get the consistency that I really want, there we go, um, I, the, uh, a, uh, a standard grade KitchenAid actually burns up, the motor burns up because uh, I like my dough really dense in one big blob uh, and it tends to as you can see, it tends to uh, get really dense. And if you don't have a commercial grade KitchenAid, uh, I've uh, learned the hard way, it tends to just burn up the uh, burn up the motor. So this is actually right here, this is what I'm looking for. This is good. Uh, again, as it shows you, it's all one big ball, one, you know, one bunched up ball. And uh, once it gets to that point, then I go ahead and stop it. Okay, see how it is. Maybe add a little bit more flour. Um, ah, maybe not, uh, but I'll probably add a flour when I'm on the table here. But as you can see now, just one, um, well normally I, I double or triple, when I'm making hardtack I double or triple this, uh, but uh, this, is, this is kind of the consistency we're looking for right here. So good, uh, good start with the KitchenAid, now we'll move to the table. Alright, so uh, when I have the, uh, the ball of dough here, uh, first thing I do is I actually put a little bit of flour uh, out on my table for like a base layer. Um, my wife loves me because I get the kitchen gigantically dirty. Uh, but I basically just use my roller and roll out what I would call a bed of the, uh, I guess we, as I was gonna talk about the two rollers you can choose. Again, if, if you cook a lot, you kinda know the benefits between a, a wooden roller and a non-wooden roller. Uh, there are some benefits and drawbacks to each. Uh, I'll just leave it to you on what you wanna do. So basically what I do is I actually get, I get a little bit of uh, flour to start my base because what you'll notice is uh, even though it's relatively dense ball of dough, uh, it still is too moist. Um, to actually be of any uh, use to actually cut your uh, squares from. Uh, so what I do, I'll go ahead and get my spoon. I uh, grab, grab the ball of dough and just uh, scoop it out onto my bed of flour. Okay. Once I do that, then Usually at this point it's the you know sticky phase here. Uh, then I go ahead, sprinkle some flour on the top, spread it around so it doesn't stick to my hands, and then I start kind of at least to start with uh, start flattening out a little bit. Now one thing uh, that is good and one thing I guess good to do, but also got to be careful with it uh, is is kneading it. You know, folding it over. Uh, folding it over, kneading it again, and folding it over and kneading it again. Uh, obviously, that's good to keep mixing everything in. But if what you'll do is if you if you fold it over and knead it uh, with a good decent layer of uh, flour on the top in between the folds, uh, what you're going to do is create an area that really doesn't stick to each other, and you're going to create layers in that hardtack that then when you cook it, uh, it'll actually split in, uh, into like a, a seven layer cake, and that's not what you want to do. That's kind of what you want to avoid. Uh, so now that I'm actually kind of going out like this, um, it's, it's actually came together pretty, pretty good, pretty easy, and uh, once I have a nice non-sticky layer, I go ahead, put my flour to the side here, and then really start start rolling this out here. Now, like I said, normally 
Um, I have this, this recipe is doubled or tripled of what I normally do. So I'm actually kind of new to doing something this small, <laughs> kind of uh, learning as I go here. Um, but really, actually, wow, normally it takes a lot longer than this, but uh, normally you're, you're looking for that third of an inch thickness. Uh, and really, I pretty much got it right now. Um, now, if you go too thin, again, you're going to create that cracker-like uh, feeling, cracker-like, uh, you know, well, you're going to create a cracker, uh, which is not going to be uh, sustainable during a campaign. It's not going to uh, stay, you know, together. Uh, it's going to break apart, break into chunks, and that's not, that's not what you want to do. You want something that will actually be, uh, you know, strong enough to be able to stick in your haversack without turning into a ball of crumbs. So right there, as far as before we cut it, that's what we're looking for. So uh, about a third of an inch thick. Um, relatively good lay. I mean, I could roll it out a little bit, but I'm already a little bit too thin, uh, but actually it looks pretty good. So let's go to our cutting. All right, so now for the cutting. Um, one of the things that you'll see, this is Fall Creek sells this. Uh, the, the, the pieces of hardtack that you cut generally need to be four inches by four inch square uh, with about 12 holes, or sorry, 16 holes in the hardtack. Uh, I'm really anal about making, you know, I like my pieces of hardtack to be very consistent, uh, very uniform. Uh, you'll see a lot of guys actually cut, you know, use a knife and cut four by four squares and then take forks and poke holes in them. That's fine. Uh, but I like consistency and uniformity. Obviously, this is not, uh, especially with hex heads, uh, it's not very uh, authentic at all uh, as far as the cut. But what I do like is when you compare the end result uh, of this uh, cutting device to the standard, you know, you take a knife and four by fours and stuff like that, uh, this tends to produce a lot more authentic looking pieces of hard tack than just cutting it uh, with a pizza cutter or a knife and then poking holes with it in a fork. So I, I, that's what I do like about uh, this. Again, it's not really authentic. Uh, obviously screws are, are not, uh, you know, uh, very authentic, but uh, it does work. I do like it and I am really anal about being uniform and it does create very uniform uh, deals. So, and one of the things that you'll notice is, or one of the complaints about these, is that using these uh, people hate them because it's too sticky. They'll, you know, they'll put it on there and it, it'll lift up and they have to peel it away. And then of course it deforms a piece of hardtack then and it's just a pain. Well, the secret of that is to make sure your, you know, the top part of your uh, hardtack actually has a decent layer of flour on it. If you have a nice, decent layer of flour on it, it will not stick. Uh, one thing I've noticed is as you get bigger and you, I mean, normally I have a whole kitchen table of, of dough pulled out. Uh, but you need to make sure it's a good layer on top. And then what I do is I flip that whole thing over. Uh, again, smooth it out with my roller, not putting too much pressure to make it thinner. Uh, smooth it out and I put a little bit more flour on that. And then once you do that, flip it over a couple times. Uh, it won't stick because as you go, uh, it'll pick up that flour, the moisture will, and it'll get sticky on the bottom. It'll get sticky on the top. Um, but if you have a decent, you know, decent, decent layer of flour on the top uh, and you cut it, it won't stick. So let's go ahead. Let's try our first bit. So usually what I do, I grab my cutter, grab my knife, uh, try to predict uh, how I'm going to get the best or the most um, pieces out of my uh, you know, shape here. Obviously, this is not the most ideal shape, uh, but we'll, we'll stick with it here. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cut here. I'll start over here again, corner to corner, press down. And what I do, I take my knife and just trace trace out the pieces like that okay and then i bring it out and then there's your piece of hard tack right after that i go ahead and i set it on a plate or on a uh, cookie pan and i set it set it aside so then after that next cut make sure you have a full piece push down Scrape one side, scrape another, scrape the excess. Excess goes in a corner, lift it up, throw it in my hand. Now they got another good piece of hard tack there. Put it right, right by the side like that. Okay. Then what I do is just keep on going. Again, cut, scrape, excess, excess goes in my pile, scrape this side lift up oh as you can see it didn't stick at all didn't deform go ahead right here stick it right in line there 
And that, just as easy as it gets, just like that. Go ahead and cut, scrape that side, scrape the excess, scrape that side, going down, lift up, dent stick to the cutter. Again, another good piece. And I'll put it right there on the end, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut the rest of these. I might put a short one here. I'll cut the rest of these, show you what my panel looks like afterwards, and uh, then we'll get cooking or get baking. So there's another piece, just goes like that. There we go. So let me cut the rest of them, and then we'll talk about the heat and the cooking. All right, so here we are. Uh, I, uh, I cut the uh, the four pieces, or I got cu cut the, all the additional pieces. I have the, uh, the, the excess here, what I'd probably do, or, you know, neat that, roll that out, maybe get three more pieces out of that. Uh, to give you an idea of time frame, uh, you know, th from the last time I cut the video to now, uh, all these only took about, you know, two more minutes. I mean, uh, just, you know, 120 more seconds, uh, and I, I got these cut. It doesn't take that much time. If you do the prep work, you know, make the make the flour the consistency you want. It won't stick. It won't. You know, so where is it here? It won't stick to your cutter. Uh, it won't stick to your knives. Uh, you'll be able to, you know, punch them out, put them on the tray, uh, and then go ahead and cook them. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we cut them out, nice and uniform. This makes me happy. Uh, so let's go ahead, go to the oven, and let's bake them. All right. So what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna go ahead bake at 250. So we'll go down all the way to 250. Now the reason we go down that low to 250, go ahead and start, it's warming up, only takes about six seconds to warm up. Uh, the reason we do that uh, is because the, the secret to hardtack is cooking it uh, slowly at low temperature, or yeah, slowly at low temperatures, and what that does is it prevents bubbles from building up, it keeps it nice, dense, uh, without any, uh, you know, like I said, air bubbles, which actually makes it break apart. You don't want it, those air bubbles because what that does is it makes, when it, when it dries out, uh, it makes it break apart, and we don't want that on campaign to turn it in our haversacks in a big pile of mush, or a big pile of crumbs. So that's the secret. So what we'll do, let it warm up, then we'll throw it in there. All right, so now uh, our oven's warm to 250. Uh, have our uh, hardtack on our, uh, our cookie plate, and we'll go ahead and put it in there. Uh, now, one thing to note is uh, you know, normally when I do this, I actually, I'm cooking about 1,000 to 2,000 pieces at a time. Uh, so I'm jamming them in there. I'm, you know, I, I'm doing everything I can, you know, to, to cook. Norm, you know, normally it's, you know, packed to the brim. Uh, what you'll notice is if you actually stick, as we will, we'll, we'll stick our... Uh, hardtack in there uh, if you stick hardtack in and uh, you have different levels uh, in an oven uh, you'll notice that the uh, the cookie or the hardtack that is underneath will turn a, a weird kind of dark brown color uh, to prevent that obviously you need a, a kind of convection oven uh, or uh, you can stagger them you know have one in the middle on top uh, and then two smaller cookie trays uh, on the outsides on bottom uh, but if you just stack them one on top of another uh, obviously you're, you're not going to get that even cooking uh, or even baking and you're going to have a really distorted uh, unnatural color on the uh, the ones on, on, on underneath so if you have a convection a convection oven uh, no worries uh, obviously I don't have a convection oven so I gotta be careful on the placement of my hardtack so another thing to note is as I go I will go ahead and shut this another thing to note is that you're looking for a four hour time frame so we'll go ahead uh, set the timer for four hours uh, we'll get back to you here in four hours but uh, another thing to note on the uh, on the hardtack here is uh, you want to make sure that you don't cook it too fast or too hot. Uh, again, there, there's some recipes that, that say either 350 or 400 degrees for a much lower time frame. The benefit, obviously, is instead of getting you know you know one one batch of, of pieces of hardtack in say a four hour time frame, you can get them done in a 30 or 45 minute or one hour time frame. The problem with that, and as you'll know if you try it, is you're gonna get you know severe bubbling and severe gas pockets inside that, uh, excuse me, inside that, oh, uh, I guess in, inside the hardtack itself, uh, you're gonna be like, kinda like pizza crust, you know? It's gonna bubble up, uh, it's gonna crack on top, not gonna be that, have that authentic look you're looking for. Uh, so again, put your pieces in there on top, set it to 250, come back in four hours, uh, and we'll, we'll see what we got here. So. Stay with us. All right, so after the four hours is, is over, uh, the next thing you do is you take it out 
and you actually go ahead and put it on a drying rack. Now you gotta be careful uh, because if it cools too quickly, it'll actually split and then and easily get into the layers that we were talking about, which we, we wanna avoid, okay? Uh, so go ahead, uh, I normally uh, kinda let it sit in the oven for a little while, uh, and then after it kinda cools down a little bit, then I put it on a cooling rack. Uh, but after that, after it cools down and it you know gets to room temperature, uh, you're, you're done, you have your finished product. And uh, I'll zoom in here, but uh, you can see we have a pretty good, pretty good product. It's uh, still a third of an inch thick, dense, uh, relatively uniform between the 12 pieces, and uh, you know it won't crumble in your haversack. So, uh, like I said, hopefully you, you know I learned a little bit more tidbits uh, than say the other videos have uh, on hardtack. Uh, although I don't know how because there's a ton of them out there, but uh, you know we, we we have you know some lessons learned that we will, we'd like to add, and so that's why we had this video. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Feel free to uh, note below uh, the, below the video. I'll ask questions, or you guys can ask questions and uh, have a good conversation. But uh, hopefully this is uh, beneficial for you, and uh, look forward to our other videos. Thanks again for watching 11th OVC.